Hi everyone. Today I would like to invite you to the quantum spectral curve approach. Before we begin, uh, let's ask the question of what it means to solve a conformal field theory. In practice, this means to know the CFT data, the spectrum and structure constants for any values of the parameters of the theory. It is in general a hard problem. Luckily, some special CFTs like 4D SUN N equals 4 super Young Mills in the planar limit admit a structure called integrability. This allows one to write down its so-called quantum spectral curve, the topic of this video. It is also a proud moment for us to note that one of the inventors of the quantum spectral curve is our very own Nikolai Gromov. Let's consider the spectral problem of N equals 4 super Young Mills in some more detail. Suppose we want to find the spectrum of a single trace of L real scalars in N equals 4 super Young Mills. In practice, we should first construct a 6L by 6L mixing matrix of overlaps between various such operators. Then one constructs renormalized operators by diagonalizing the mixing matrix. This gives quantum corrections to the scaling dimensions of the renormalized operators called anomalous dimensions. The anomalous dimensions are nothing but the eigenvalues of the mixing matrix. Minahan and Zarembo showed a remarkable identification between the one loop mixing matrix of a trace of L scalars of N equals 4 super Young Mills and the Hamiltonian of a closed SO6 spin chain of length L. Thus, they showed that at one loop, the spectrum of anomalous dimensions of such operators is given by the energy spectrum of this integrable spin chain. For our purposes, let's restrict to the SU2 sector composed of complex scalars X and Z. The spin chain Hamiltonian is composed of a sum over sites of the chain of an identity operator minus the permutation operator. The permutation operator acts by, by flipping the spin at neighboring sites. One then identifies a trace composed of X's and Z's with a state composed of spin ups and spin downs. To build a ground state, we observed that in acting with the Hamiltonian on a state with all spins down, both the identity and permutation operators behave in the exact same way and thus cancel, giving us a state with zero energy. Then, to construct eigenstates, one builds states with magnons, which can be thought of, thought of as spin-ups propagating through the chain with some momentum. One should remember to uh, impose the quantization condition that taking a magnon all the way around the chain is nothing but acting with the identity. Similarly, for states with multiple magnons, a similar quantization condition yields the bethe ansatz equations. Here, u is called the spectral parameter and is related to the magnon momenta. And the solutions of the bethe ansatz equation, the bethe roots, give us uh, the magnon momenta. The energy can be obtained from the bethe roots using this simple formula. Now, this wouldn't be a video involving me if there, if there weren't some mathematica. So let's get to some programming. Here, I've just programmed the permutation operator, some twisted boundary conditions, the Hamiltonian, and our Hilbert space. Uh, I've introduced the, these twisted boundary conditions here uh, involving this twist phi for technical purposes. Next, we proceed with direct diagonalization of the Hamiltonian of a length three SU2 spin chain. So let me set the value of the length here. Here is our Hilbert space, the Hamiltonian itself. It's an eight by eight matrix. And as you can see, there are three distinct excited state energies. Let us see if we can find the same energies from the Bethe ansatz. So here again, I've programmed the Bethe ansatz, the twisted version. I want uh, a state with two magnons. So solving the Bethe ansatz equations uh, takes some time. So let's forward to the end. 
we see that indeed the Bethe roots, when plugged into the energy formula, they give us exactly the same energy. We introduce the Baxter polynomial as a collection of the Bethe roots. One can rewrite the Bethe ansatz equations in terms of the Baxter polynomial in the following way. Also, please notice the new notation introduced. In fact, the Baxter polynomial is the solution of a second order finite difference equation called the Baxter equation. It is the analog of the Schrodinger equation for integrable models. In this picture, the Baxter polynomial is analogous to the wave function and indeed the charges of the state it describes are contained in its asymptotics. You might have noticed an ambiguity in the definition of the ground state. I chose all spins down, but I could equally well have chosen all spins up. Indeed, in this picture, N1 spin up excitations in a sea of spin downs translates to L minus N1 spin down excitations in a sea of spin ups. There is another Baxter polynomial, Q2, with asymptotics U to the L minus N1 that describes the state. It is a second linearly independent solution of the Baxter equation. Linear independence dictates that the Ronskian of the two solutions is non-zero, and we have the following Ronskian relation. In fact, one can derive the Baxter equation starting with a trivial determinant and using this Ronskian relation. Remarkably, one can actually reverse the logic flow. We start with the Ronskian relations, impose the asymptotics and polynomiality of Q1 and Q2, and this is completely equivalent to the bethe ansatz equations. This is exactly the logic of the quantum spectral curve. Let's see it at work. Finally, for the reverse logic of the quantum spectral curve, I start with the polynomial ansatz for the two Baxter polynomials, Q1 and Q2. As you can see here, A1, A0, and B0 are parameters, uh, and I will solve for these parameters by solving the twisted version of the Ronskian relation. As you can see now, I have some solutions for these parameters, and more importantly, I was able to get the solution in just one second, whereas in the bethe ansatz case, to find the same solution, it took about 100 seconds. So that's already uh, order two, order two orders of magnitude better. So once I've solved for these parameters, I can plug it into a similar energy formula written in terms of the Baxter polynomials, and voila, I get exactly the same energies as I got by direct diagonalization. This reverse logic flow is exactly the logic of the quantum spectral curve, and as we can see, it is much, much more efficient. In going from the symmetry group SU2 to PSU22 slash 4, the symmetry group of n equals 4 Yang Mills, we go from 2 to 2 to the power 8 Baxter polynomials. Further, in going from spin chains to the ADS CFT integrable system, polynomiality assumptions now get upgraded to specific analytic properties of Q functions. Thus, the quantum spectral curve enables us to at least in principle solve the planar spectrum of n equals 4 super Yang mills. There are still many open questions about structure constants, so please come to my talk on Friday to know more.